Hi everyone, thanks for coming along. Um, <clears throat> so this is us, we are War Thistleton Architects, it's me there, and uh, we build and design and research in timber. So um, <clears throat> I set up in practice uh, 21 years ago uh, last week and straight from college and we started with kitchen extensions and roof extensions cafes, restaurants, and then it's just slowly got bigger and bigger as we've gone along. But I think because I never really worked for anybody else, our ideas around how we would practice are probably slightly different from the pathways that most other practices have taken. I think that there's a kind of a level of interrogation into what we do that comes from, Frank came from sort of some naivety because we didn't know what we were doing. So, um, de facto, we interrogated everything. Yeah. So I'm going to start with a graph, but there won't be any more graphs. So, in the UK, in Europe, I don't know about here, but in the UK and Europe, we measure the carbon footprint of a building over 50 years of the building's life. And we say, they say, in building code and in planning regulations, get a whole series of checklists that you have to run through, whole tonnages of carbon this and carbon that, that make very little kind of sort of immediate sense. But they, so they say that actually the operations of a building, that's the heating, the lighting, the cooling of the building, the carbon that's produced by that energy after 50 years is about two, it's just over half of the building's carbon footprint. And I think for the last sort of 20 years or so, that's been the principal focus of how architects are going to deal with climate change and their effect on climate change. Now, it varies from country to country, but in the UK, um, about 40% of our greenhouse gases in the UK come from construction and from uh, buildings in use. So a massive amount of kind of climate change and the implications of climate change are down to construction and the actions of architects. So in my view, I think that kind of, you know, if you, if you think of architecture as being primarily a political act, you know, in a kind of what, in a wider social sense, then for an architect not to engage in an understanding of, of the implications of their work on the environment is in itself a standpoint. So the architecture that we tend to largely celebrate at the moment really doesn't recognize at all its impact on the environment. And what I would do is to appeal to you as the next generation of architects for responsibility and an understanding into what you do and the implications that will have on climate change. Because if the architects don't do it, then we're really in trouble. So look, so this is it, so 54%, so all our tick boxes, all the checklists are all about the building's operation. But actually, when you build the building, 100% is all about the construction process and all about the building materials. So combined globally, the, uh, the carbon emissions of just producing concrete and steel are responsible globally for about 15% of all greenhouse gas emissions, just from producing concrete. In fact, when the International uh, Protocol on Climate Change came out, they identified the production of cement as the largest individual polluter in the world. So this is what we're faced with, but in architectural regulations, in planning law, etc., this is not talked about or recognised. The thing is, we don't have 50 years, we've got about 17 years to reach our Paris Accords, to get to the Paris Accords. And if you look at the carbon footprint of construction of buildings over 17 years, more than two thirds is about the materials and the building process. Now, when the first laws and regulations came into the UK about reducing, about talking about sustainability, about reducing carbon footprint, etc., this wasn't talked about. It still isn't. It seemed to be an issue in the UK. But we were being asked to respond to these kind of, you know, to these checklists and everything. And we just thought, well, you know, we'd have a little bit more of a closer look at that. And at the same time, we were very aware that it seemed to us that architects that were interested in sustainability were always marginalized. You know, they're always on the periphery of the kind of architectural debate of the architectural culture. You know, they're the ones that kind of, you know, they do the bird watching centers and they do the kind of bits on the edge, but never really mainstream. So we were determined to be both 
aware of the environmental impact of our work and to be mainstream, to kind of, you know, to work on a variety of projects, to work with big developers and public institutes.